okay, so now that we have the logistic model trained, right, let's play around with the SVM model instead, right? So in the SVM model, the support vector machine model, it's going to be very similar to what we just did, right? Except here we have um, SVM.model. The function is called SVM. Again, we're going to you say y is our outcome variable and the age balance and duration are our input variables right um and you can try a nonlinear or linear kernel if you remember that depends upon is are we just going to do one line across the space for the svm or are we can do multiple lines and again the data is training data right so we can do oops, hit the wrong buttons we can do that real quick we can run the model SVM is going to take a little bit longer because it's doing a um, slight, slightly different approach, right? Um, and it... Okay, everybody, welcome back. Um, okay, everybody, welcome back. So now that we have a logistic model, let's go play around with support vector machines instead. So in support vector machines, right, the frame of to create the model is very similar, right? So we're gonna use this SVM function, uh, which comes from that um, uh, E1071 package that we installed previously, right? Um, and the SVM function takes a formula just like all our other models that we've looked at so far do. So we're going to take the output variable y and we're going to use age, balance, and duration as our features. And if you'll notice at the end, it says that the kernel equals linear and the data equals training data. So what does a kernel meaning linear mean? It's always useful to look that up. So we can go down and we can say kernel, kernel, kernel. So the kernel used in training in particular, you might consider changing some of the following parameters. So you can do it like a linear, you can have a polynomial, a radio basis, or a sigmoid, right? So these are, what are the shapes of the lines we're gonna use to separate the data, right? Um, and in this case, we're saying you can only basically use a straight lines, right? So we can uh, build the model and then look at the results. In this case, we're just gonna print out the, the SVM model. Um, and you know, it basically says it's a C classification, linear class of one, and it gives you how many support vectors it had to do to draw kind of the line through the space to make the prediction, right? Um, and now we can try and predict using the SVM, right? Using that predict function that we used before. So we have our model, we have the test data that we want to predict on, and the type is going to equal response. So we didn't talk about this last time, uh, but the type is kind of an important thing to set. So what is the type? Um, the type, uh, and it doesn't actually define it in the predict tool, but the type basically tells you what kind of, of, of prediction you're looking at, right? Are you looking at something like a, a class or are you looking at a probability or what are you looking at for your prediction, right? Uh, and so in this case, it's a response variable prediction, right? Um, and so then we're gonna again compute um, the performance, right, of the prediction. And so we can, oh, I actually forgot to run the code above, right? So we didn't actually have the predict.svm tool. So we can create the performance uh, table that we looked at. And in this case, it worked very well, right? Basically, as we've been mentioning, you know, one of the simplest ways to get a decent result in this model is to predict that every, everyone is going to turn down the offer. And in fact, that's what happened. Everyone, you know, the SVM basically said, I'm just going to predict no's for everyone. Right, and it got that right 10,000 times, and it got it wrong 3,449 times. So we're not even gonna look at the performance metrics. We know what it's doing here. Um, let's kind of look to see if we can improve it. So one way we could presume we could improve it is we could actually use all of the data that's in the training data, not just um, the, um, the three variables. So what else was in there? Well, let's look at our training data again. So if we go up here, training data, right? It's going to use job, marital, education, default, balance, all this stuff. And this is kind of nice because unlike K-nearest neighbors and, um, you know, some of the other variables, we don't have to worry as much about handling all these special classification methods for support vector machines. There are basically methods built into support vector machines to handle 
um, categorical data differently than it handles numerical data and things like that. So we can just throw all the data and that's what that period is. If you remember back to the beginning, it says use all the variables that aren't Y to make a prediction about Y. Uh, and this is going to take a little bit to run, but uh, hopefully it will complete shortly. Um, and we can talk about what the result of that is and see if it gets any better result than, um, the, um, than what we had before. Um, support vector machines are, are, were kind of a, a state-of-the-art method about 20 years ago for a lot of these kind of problems. And so they still work pretty well in a lot of these spaces. So let's see print out what it comes up with. So it came up with a classification, still using a linear kernel. I came up uh, with 3,656 spore vectors. So the amount of different things is actually less than it was before. Um, we can create our prediction on the result again, right? So we have that and we can build the performance table and then we can look at the performance table. And this time it's actually, as you can see, it's doing something slightly different. It is predicting no fairly well, but it has um, a, quite a few numbers of yeses that it predicts correctly. And if we look down at this, right, we get the fact that um, it has a fairly high level of specificity, has a decent level of sensitivity, but still not very high, 0 0.08. That's pretty low compared to some of the ones we saw for like the KNR snares. Um, the precision is um, decent at the 42, and the accuracy is actually the lowest we've seen so far. So um, this actually doesn't seem to work very well. And, you know, there's a bunch of other things we could play around with. We could try uh, using nonlinear kernels. Those take a long time for it to work because if you think about it, it has a lot more variables to work with. Uh, but I kind of wanted to introduce the basic idea of an SVM to you, show you kind of what it's doing, uh, and kind of present to you the possibility that it's a tool that might work well in some scenarios. So with that being said, um, that's it for this first set of talks. Um, we didn't talk about Naive Bayes because we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get to some um, uh, word level data in uh, one of the upcoming sessions. But um, other than that, this kind of went through all the methods that we talked about in the theory sections that accompany this lecture. So uh, thanks, and I'll see you soon.